Hey, did you know you can control Disting Mark IV with MIDI? That you can change algorithms, load presets, tweak parameters, all by sending it MIDI CCs? You can, and it's actually in the manual. <laughs> but uh, in this video, I'm going to show you some examples of how you might take advantage of that feature to basically give Disting some extra knobs and buttons. Okay, so the setup here is this. We've got Disting Mark IV and a BeatStep Pro. And in between, we're using MIDI XO as a MIDI breakout for disting. If you haven't heard of this module, uh, MIDI XO, you can check out our other videos and um, the website. But you should know, too, if you have an expert sleepers MIDI breakout, that'll work for everything that I'm showing also. So the first thing we're going to do is get the BeatStep Pro and disting talking to each other. Uh, I'll plug one end of my eighth inch stereo cable into the back of the BSP. And I'll plug the other end into the input jack of MIDI XO. Um, if I want to verify that they're talking, one easy way would just be to switch to like the G7 algorithm, which is the MIDI to CV converter. And um, then if I tap a pad on the BeatStep Pro, I should see the B output flash. If that doesn't work, it's probably because of one of two things. Uh, you may have to switch the polarity switch on MIDI XO, or you might have used a regular old patch cable instead of a stereo cable. All you need to do to switch algorithms uh, through MIDI is to send CC number 18 to Disting. In this example, I'll just use encoder number 16 on the BeatStep Pro. So what's going to happen is as I turn that knob, I'll be scrolling through the different algorithms on Disting. To set up the BeatStep Pro to send MIDI CC number 18 with that encoder, I'll just go into Arturia's uh, MIDI Control Center the MCC, and that's the software that lets you configure everything about the BeatStep Pro. And I'll end up configuring a bunch of stuff in here for this video, and I'll, I'll just put all those settings in a new project, and I'll call it Disting. I'll go over to encoder number 16 and set its MIDI CC number to 18, and that's it. We don't need to change anything else down in the bottom. Uh, in particular, we don't need to change the range. The, the range of the knob is always going to be 0 to 127 in these examples. There, but, you know, there might it might actually be that there are 100 different algorithms. So uh, you might be worried that it's going to send 0 through 127 to disting, but you're actually looking for a number that's like 0 to 100. So you don't have to worry about that. Disting maps that range to whatever range it's looking for. And that's important to know when you start using encoders to change parameters that might only be looking for a number between one and five. So that's all the configuring I'm gonna do right now. I'll save my project and I'll drag it onto project three on the BeatStep Pro. It takes a minute to sync. Then on the BeatStep Pro, I'll go into control mode and choose project three. And now when I turn encoder number 16, I can see on the disting display that we're cycling through the algorithms. One thing that kind of freaked me out a little bit is that um, it seems to be scrolling smoothly through all the algorithms, but then occasionally it shows something unexpected on the display. And I thought it was just, I thought it was a bug. I thought it was glitching or something, but I asked around and Oz explained that those are um, algorithms that normally display something other than the algorithm number on the screen anyway. So um, G5, the tuner algorithm, for example, shows the note instead of showing G5 on the display. Now, changing algorithms by twisting a knob is kind of interesting, just as like a proof of concept, but it's not so useful, really. So um, maybe something that's more useful is if we could use the step buttons on the BeatStep Pro to jump to a specific algorithm. So I'll go back into the MCC, and for this example, we'll set a program change message instead of a CC. I think you'd probably do it with a CC also, but I have, I have a thing that I'm going with here. So program change instead. And uh, if you look in the manual, it shows that program change selects either an algorithm or loads of presets. So that's the next thing we'll try. But right now, uh, we're just going to set step number one so that it sends program change number one. And step number two is going to send program two and so on all the way up to um, step eight. I'll save the project, drag it onto project three again. And after it's done syncing, I'll just go over to the BeatStep Pro. And whenever I press buttons numbers one through eight, it's jumping to different algorithms. Now you'll notice that the numbers are just corresponding to basically the alphabetical list of algorithms. And um, if you wanted to jump to algorithm G3, I guess you could count and see what number algorithm that is. It's not really listed anywhere, uh, but you could take that number and set button step button one to that program number. But 
probably what you want is instead of switching algorithms, you probably want to jump to a preset. And that makes a lot more sense with something like this. So um, the preset stores an algorithm and all the settings that go with it, like the parameters. So uh, I've already got some presets stored. If I load preset one, it jumps to algorithm F6 with whatever parameters were set when I saved it. Preset two is algorithm H5 for me and so on. Now, preset zero is special and I'll leave it to you to go back to the disting manual and read about that. We'll just skip it for now and just start with preset number one. Uh, so how do I get the st step numbers to jump to presets instead of algorithms like it's doing right now? Well, it's just a setting on disting. So you go into settings and choose Pogum Change Alg, which I think is Program Change Algorithm. It's like a question, Program Change Algorithm. And uh, the values are either one or zero. And if you remember from the first Tron movie, number one is yes, number zero is no. So uh, Program Change Algorithm, no. So we'll change it to zero, and that means it'll change um, to a preset uh, instead of algorithms when you um, send a program change message. So if I press the step buttons now, you can see that it's jumping to my presets, preset one, preset two, and so on. Perfect. Okay, I'm back in the MIDI control center, and you can see that I've got the first eight encoders assigned to send MIDI CCs one through eight. Those are gonna to correspond to the first eight parameters for whatever algorithm I'm in. I think most algorithms have way less than eight, but I, I mean, I know they do, but I don't think any of them have more than eight, so that's that's a good number. Now, one thing I'll mention is I, I kind of feel like it's a little confusing that the CC number and the encoder number on BSP both say one, for example, when disting labels the parameters starting at zero. So that kind of becomes confusing when you're looking at the manual or the Volt Illustrated manual and it says, parameter three, but you have to remember that it's actually encoder number four uh, on BeatStep Pro. So you could, you know, you could put a little piece of tape there or something, make it easier, whatever. I'm just pointing that out. Anyway, let's try this out. I hit uh, step four to jump to my LFO preset and I'll tweak the first knob, number one, which should be the attenuator for the A output. And you can see that as I turn that knob, it's attenuating the signal on the A output. And the second knob is attenuating the B output. So it's working. One thing you notice though is that um, it only shows feedback on the disting display for one of those parameters. And that's something you just have to live with. Basically, at least right now, the way it works is that disting will only show feedback on its display for the currently selected parameter. So if you have six different parameters and you're tweaking the knobs, you'll only see it for the parameter that you actually selected with the Z knob last time. So you have you do have feedback on the BeatStep Pro, but that's not ideal since it's always going to be showing that raw zero to 127 value and not the actual parameter value that you're changing. But this is still already pretty cool that we can do this. This, uh, this one knob per parameter thing gets a lot more fun when you're in an algorithm like F6, which is basically a Turing machine, right? For that particular algorithm, it's also useful to be able to control the Z knob from the BeatStep Pro, and we can do that. So I'll go back to the MCC and set encoder number nine to send MIDI CC 17, which according to the disting manual is the Z control. Now, before we save this, uh, the disting manual also says that when you take control of the Z knob with MIDI, you can't use the physical Z knob again until you change algorithms, or if you send a value of 64 or more on CC 19. So CC 19, it kind of unlocks the physical Z knob after you've taken control of it with MIDI. That's the idea. So while we're in the MCC, let's just set uh, step number 16 way on the end to CC19. So, so far we've only been sending CCs with knobs, but you can do it with a button too. And because it's a button, um, you can tell it to just send a value when you press it. So a specific value. So we'll put in 127 in there. Uh, it could be any number that's higher than 64. And when we press step 16, it should unlock that Z knob on the module uh, front panel. Okay, so back to the Turing machine algorithm. So at this point, I could wiggle the different encoders on the BeatStep Pro and change parameters like attenuation, length, direction, uh, transposition. Something that you'll notice right away is that the first time you turn one of these encoders, it might be sending a value that's way different than what the parameter was already set to. So for example, if a parameter is set to 100 on the disting and turning the encoder for the first time sends a zero, 
that's an extreme change to the parameter and so you might end up with some weirdness on that first turn of the knob. Also it's a good time to notice that a parameter like direction which only has two possible values, zero or one, doesn't actually change from zero to one until you get past the halfway point on the encoder. And so for a parameter like that, it's actually kind of nice because once you find that middle point on the encoder, you can kind of just wiggle it back and forth a little bit and you have like this real fine control of the direction going back and forth between zero and one. Or you could not use a knob at all and instead use a button on the BeatStep Pro to toggle between those two values. Okay, let's go a little further with this Turing Machine example. Since MIDI XO gives me a MIDI input and output from Disting, uh, and this algorithm actually sends MIDI notes, I can connect a stereo cable from that output jack on MIDI XO and connect the other end to the MIDI input on my Make Noise O Coast. And now as I tweak parameters on the BeatStep Pro, I'm affecting both the O Coast and the Z3000. And maybe I can even tune those two oscillators and get some kind of interesting interesting duophony. Um, doesn't matter. This is kind of a, um, it sounds like a tangent, but I did want to show you this because it brings up a limitation of this, this setup. And it's something that you run into if you're dealing with MIDI output. So these parameters, um, distinct parameters aren't really meant to be changed super quickly. So wiggling a knob really fast uh, was never intended, I think. Uh, you know, you're supposed to be doing it through the menu. And so uh, you can end up in a situation where you're kind of wailing away at the encoders and you end up with, in particular, MIDI notes that get screwed up. So you can have stuck MIDI notes. And in this case with the O Coast, I know that I can hold down the program B button and it'll clear any stuck notes. And uh, most MIDI devices have some kind of like end all notes feature or a panic button. And in any case, it's worth pointing out that things can get glitchy if you change parameters fast or at the wrong moment, particularly when it comes to MIDI notes. And um, that could be a showstopper for you or not. Okay, so that's almost it. Hopefully that's enough to get you interested in experimenting with this and uh, give you a starting point. If you do try this out, I would head straight for dual Euclidean rhythms. Um, that algorithm's really great to have all those knobs for. Okay, so one last bonus example is, um, I'll, I'll just show you. I'm gonna start by switching to algorithm J5, which is the stereo recorder. This algorithm starts recording audio on the SD card whenever the Z knob is turned way to the right, and it stops when you turn the Z knob way to the left. So you can control this with the Z input on the on the actual module and just send it a gate, right, with CV. And um, that works, but check this out. If I go to the MCC and choose device settings and jump down to the transport section, I can configure the record button on the BeatStep Pro to send CC number 17. Remember, that's the Z knob. Now when I press record on the BeatStep Pro, the button turns red and it starts recording on disting. When I press it again, light turns off, recording stops. Nice, right? You can also do this with any of the step buttons. Just set them to toggle instead of gate. Uh, it works the same way. It lights up and then you hit it again and it turns off. And in case it's not obvious, anything that we've done with the step buttons, you can do with the pads in exactly the same way. That's everything I got. So uh, give it a try, have fun and check out xoxomodular.com. Thanks.